So again, this uh, Pixlr tool is uh, good to create something perhaps quick and dirty. Uh, if you're more familiar with Photoshop and such, go ahead and use it, or Illustrator, or maybe start to, to look into Inkscape. But let's say this is what I'm going to create. Obviously, it doesn't exactly follow all of the aesthetic guidelines that that uh, Android set out, but that again is another thing that could uh, take a while and perhaps I'm not the most artistic person. So I just want to create an icon so it doesn't look like the generic one. Uh, I did notice something here that I find a little annoying that the, the largest size of text is 130 pixels or points or whatever and I wanted it obviously larger because I've only got this much of it used. But uh, that's what I have to live with here. So this is going to be my icon for the largest version of the project and if you use something like Photoshop you can save your file and then come back to it and work on it later. And This is a little bit different so let's see how we can uh, save our project. Let's say uh, here's our icon. I'm going to go to File and Save. And we've got some locations to save, either to my computer or directly to Facebook or directly to Flickr, etc. You can create a, your Pixlr library, etc. But I'm going to save it to computer. It asks what name. I'm going to keep it as icon. If yours doesn't say icon, select icon. And then here, format, JPEG, good for most photos, or ping, transparent, full quality, BMP, TIFF, and PXD. I would not recommend you use TIFF or BMP. They're not going to work for our purposes. And I wouldn't recommend JPEG either because look at that, my transparency went away. I'm going to get that white background behind my icon. Amateur. PNG or ping is the one that I would want because then I would get a result that is transparent. And imagine the user's wallpaper behind that. Before we save the ping version though, we've got a special kind of version called PXD. This is sort of like a Photoshop PSD in that it will save your layers. The thing about using something like Photoshop is that you have layers with your elements separate and then you can reopen that Photoshop file and everything's intact. Your layers are still there. You can continue to make changes. Once you save this as a ping or JPEG, it flattens the image down to a one layer. So right now I've got like four layers. One is this purple, one is this gold, one is that text, and one is that text. I can still go back and rearrange things. They're separate. That's the great thing about digital imaging, layers. But once I save as ping, which is what I recommend, that's gone. Suddenly everything will merge and I can no longer move the my word anymore. It's, it's merged. Like you can save that much data. Definitely. So what we're going to do is save the PXD version, which apparently you can only open in Pixlr. We can't open it in Photoshop and keep working on it. Uh, so we're going to save the PXD version so we can come back to Pixlr and keep working with it. That's useful. And then we're going to save the final ping version. So let's first select PXD and just name it icon if you want. And I'm going to click OK. Get the, the, the web browser's dialog box, hopefully, that says, would you like to open or save this or whatever. I'm going to save this. I'm going to, on the desktop, save this icon.pxd file. It should automatically be PXD if you selected it on the previous screen. And I'll save that. So on the desktop, I've got a, an icon that Windows doesn't know what to do with, icon.pxd, but that's what I would then open again over on the Pixlr website to keep working. Then what we're going to do is we have to do, um, there are several ways to do this. And the way I'm going to do this, uh, because remember, ultimately we want um, five different or four different sizes, 96 by 96, 72 by 72, 48, and 36. But all of those sizes are called icon. I'm going to need an icon in LDPI, and it's called icon. And one inside of MDPI, and it's called icon. So 
I'm going to save each one of these sizes with the name of 96.ping, 48.ping, 72.ping, right, the size. And then I'm going to put them into the appropriate folder, and then I obviously have to delete icon, and then change the name of 72.png into icon.png. And that's what I was saying earlier about I don't want to have to dig in through the code where can I change the name, uh, the reference to that graphic, I'll just change the graphic. So here in Pixlr, exactly. So this one here, which is still the largest sized one, remember that's the largest one that we want to use eventually, not in the app, but in the App Store. Here we'll go back to Save, Format, Ping. And the name of the file will be 512. Five twelve. So I'll click OK and save that to the desktop. So now I've got the PXD file and the PNG file. And that 512 sized one I will use later on as my store listing. Now I need to create the 96 and the 72, etc. I'm going to take this high quality large sized one and shrink it down to these different sizes and then save. So in order for this to work the most smoothly, what I will do is this. Because we've already saved our PXD file, we're going to go up to the Layer menu and say Merge Visible. This is going to avoid a little bit of issues later on because ultimately we're going to shrink things down. Actually, this might do something else. On mine, it's going to look weird, but yours will probably be OK. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll go to Merge Visible. What happens, my layers here show that I had four layers, they've emerged into one layer. So now I can no longer get my move tool and move things around. But that'll save me some effort right here, that when I go to the image menu, image size, I'm going to say make this into a 96 by 96 sized picture. Constraint proportions is on, so if I make the first value 96, the second one becomes 96 as well. It stays in proportion. So we've got that size. See, the reason we did the merge visible is because I, I went back just to see this, and this is, I noticed, a quirk from Pixel. It doesn't happen in Photoshop, for example. I went back to my original one that still has the layers. And then I did the shrink down to 96. The square is shrunk down. That's nice, but not the text. The text is still huge. So then I would, do the, I would need to do the extra step of shrinking down the text. So it's kind of either or. Do you want it to all merge down at the same time? or shrink down, that was the first going to layer merge visible. Or at this point now I have to kind of struggle a bit and rearrange my text again. It's up to you to do.
Okay, this looks better than uh, anything Yeah. Okay, so um, I've got down to the 96 sized one, so I'm going to uh, do the save again. File, save. Make sure it's ping again. And then this is, is, is a file name 96. I think what's in, once in this, it's in this proportion, I think shrinking down will work a little bit better, so I will uh, merge this one. And then I need to shrink this down to the 72. So image menu, image size, 72. Same thing. Save as ping and call it 72. So I started with my largest size, 512. And then from that, I can shrink down to the smaller sizes and have good quality. If I started with the original size 36 or 48 and then tried to make that larger, it would get very fuzzy, low quality. So I'm going to save that one as 72.ping. And then you should guess by now the other ones. What else we need to do? 48 pixels. That text might not be that good for that size. One uh, trick here would be perhaps to uh, redo the icon a bit at these sizes. Maybe not have the my part of it. Maybe just have the SDCE because my is still a little hard to read. So this is why people go to college and get degrees on this stuff, because graphic design, it's pretty different than web design or web development, isn't it? How many of you are feeling, well, can't we get back to the code? I'm tired of graphics. Don't I have, Ari Don't I have Arial here? Which one do you Arial. Just a very simple. Well, let me choose Caslon and then maybe a smaller size where. Oh, I should type something. My. And I should change the color. And then finally, the smallest size here is 36.
All right, so it takes a little bit of effort, but here I've created the sizes. And then I have the original PXD file, so I can continue to work on it in Pixlr at some point. But uh, this is what I want. And you know what? I didn't save that as pings. Uh, so this is the setup that you need to do to create icons for your different um, for your different devices. Go. So they've all got the transparency, then we're going to add them to our project in a moment. But we want to need a little help here. We want to get some icons so that we can customize our project. So I'm going to move on in just a moment. Unless you have any final questions, I have all of my sizes on the desktop. And then it'll be a matter of dragging and dropping from the desktop into the appropriate folder in Eclipse. And I'll do that in just a moment. So 30 seconds and then I'll go on. I'm done with Eclipse, so I'm going to just exit this. But notice, uh, not Eclipse, uh, Pixlr. Notice uh, with Pixar we uh, also have a login and sign up and you could be saving your projects up on your Pixlr account if you want. But I'm going to close this because it takes up more resources on my computer. I'm done with Pixlr. Question? In Eclipse it looks like if you load the manifest file and manually choose your thing file, it actually saves it on you know, all four different I'd like to know about that. So what what did you do here? So on, on this on this screen, you click on the icons, click browse, mm -hmm. and then click create new icon. And then I think click click next. Are we keeping that name? Because there's already an IC launcher. I see launcher was the default. I think, I think there's a, after you click next, you, you can go to the browse and you can choose whatever image you want. So then you can go to the browse and then choose your, whatever your file is. The largest one or which one? What's that? I chose the five shell version. Finish. We'll probably no background color. Uh, background color. How do we do background color? None. Shape none. There we go. Everyone, click finish. It actually keeps giving you the potatoes or messages. I can do one way to place it in the medium, the low, the high. Save 
I had also made an X, X, H, D, P, I. Well, that's pretty useful. I think, uh, I suppose, well, well, I'll try that. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll blame you. But um, yeah, let's uh, let's try that. That seemed to work. So um, we might not need to create all sizes. Yeah. Yeah. One comment is if you are creating a fresh new application. Mm -hmm. Then it lets you kind of write characters as if you're using your own icon. Yeah, like when we did a while ago. Uh, do you mean like when we did the. Um, you can choose the border, you should use the circle, what you want to write inside. Yeah, yeah, we, we did that early on in the, in the last month. Uh, if we had less artistic ability, yeah, we could use some cool fonts and such. Okay, so let's give that a try then. Um, I've got at least my 512 pixel sized one on my desktop, the largest one. And then we'll go to Eclipse. And then in uh, the... We're going to open the Android manifest file. Switch over to the application tab because, as you see here, there's various things that we can work with. <clears throat> One of them is the icon. Hey, look, label, string, app name. That's why we changed in that string the name of our app because the label that appears below the icon is right there. So apparently, here under icon, Under icon, uh, it might have been pointing to the previous. Yours says drawable slash icon, or whatever yours says. Um, so here, there's a browse next to icon. On this row here, select browse. And up here, it's got IC launcher selected. It seems to it seems that it'll probably work with either because right here this is one of the, I guess the place where we can explicitly tell it if it was called my icon we could choose that but it doesn't seem to matter let's do it this way we'll select IC launcher because the icon that's already there is going to be replaced anyway um, so we'll select IC launcher create new icon. And at the bottom here, create new icon. And it says so this is your launcher icon, which is what will appear below, which will appear in your in your apps. Uh, for which project that makes sense. I don't have any open. What's the icon name? Seems that we don't have to deal with that, but we'll click next. And then here's the spot where we could choose, you know, some, some text or clip art and such. But we'll want to go to image. So at the top here we've got image. And then we'll select here to browse for the largest size. Uh, I went with the 512. And then it gave me this lovely red background behind everything, which I don't want. So right here you can select, I guess not that, choose square, uh, choose none and not square. I'll select none. And then the preview looks like that, that it's the actual icon that I designed with none of that extra background. <coughs> oh, that's useful if you do the if you leave trim on what it'll do if you had a little bit of empty space it'll it'll cut that out if you don't in my case, I had a little bit of empty space that maybe shrinks my icon a bit. So you can decide if you do want to trim that or not. And then you've also got some padding there. This is 15%. But the only thing I did was I 
turn the shape to none and I left the trim on. So it's going to take these icons and make your different sizes for you. And then I'll finish and it's going to say, well you've already got an IC launcher ping file in these folders. You can do, if you want to replace, I'm going to say yes to all because it's going to ask you like four or five times. takes you back here and I'll just click OK. And to see the full result you want to launch it. Your app launches and then you want to go to your app drawer and look, remember it's alphabetical, mine's on the front screen here, but if you've got a name with a Z, you want to go over to the second screen, uh, and then you'll see your icon there. Again, I'm not expecting this to be, you know, designers. Look at how these icons, they work, they look really nice. Mine, and I can admit, mine's not that good, but we saw the process that we need to create some graphic and then we just discovered here um, a way to a way to do this easier. What I was going to do is drag these into the folder, into the appropriate folder, and then rename them. This seems to be a lot better. So uh, thanks for that, Fred. It was like this it seems to be a good time saver. Yes. I would guess that when you are doing resizing on a system like Photoshop, you know if they, they put a lot of effort into uh, the uh, algorithms used to do that. Uh, the one that is built into uh, Eclipse is probably more primitive by comparison. That could be that could be a possibility. Yeah, that's a good point. These graphics programs uh, are built for that to give you the best output. So that's a consideration. Um, definitely with mine here, I don't I don't quite like the result again because. Oops, because I didn't take a lot of effort into designing the app, but notice it's not that readable. Um, but you're right. I would use I would probably use something more like Photoshop. Now on my I put it on my device here, and it it, it looks a little sharper I think than on the virtual device. But still, the text inside is too small. But um, uh, nothing really. Um, the we could use any name. We repurpose the name Icon Launcher. You're talking about this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we repurpose that name, and I saw in the documentation that uh, Android recommends use these file names. And one of them was IC Launcher. So we could have made a new name and used that name, like my my picture. And that'd be fine. So there's no there's no real difference, but the documentation see uh, the documentation was saying to use the IC launcher. All right, did you guys test it? And did you see your brand new pretty icon on your apps screen? I don't see it. Uh, okay, let's let me take a quick look. Which uh, version of that 
got these three sticks. The big sticks. Oh, no, not the. Not the. Oh, no, man, remember? That's the Jake Graham level. Oh, sorry. Uh, my okay. bad. Okay. And then the angle of the Jake Graham. Uh. Because this is four fortune, and I've not yet been able to get through it. Yeah. Or, sorry, this is four fortune. Oh, good. Another way to customize it. <laughs> How do you like the quality of the, of the clip art on your device? So, unfortunately, you can judge a book by its cover because I look at all of these icons and I think those are good icons. Those are good apps. And then I look at that one, not so much. But this is, again, the whole idea of you need to be a little bit of a designer. And I would, my advice to you is look at the icons that are already there and see how can you get as close to them as possible. Obviously, uh, you know, I'm violating all of the rules that the, that the developer portal told me. You know, make it like a little three-dimensional, make it head-on, make it look like a real thing. Uh, that's going to just take more effort than we have time for that I want to invest. But here maybe decide, maybe get the shape of the college's logo which is like a little uh, a stylized sun, isn't it? I could take that, make it a little 3D like all of these other ones, put in some of those colors or put in the color of the college, and then it's going to be more like the app icon that I had in my visions. But that's going to take more effort. So this is going to be okay for us. Uh, and now my icon looks different from all of yours. And like I said, when we, when we go through this course, I would prefer that all of you then continue to work on your own app because it's got your name, your icon, your style. And we're going to talk about adding then your own fonts and splash screen and all of that. So our project looks good here. I think we can squeeze in one more thing that I want to talk about, which is a, a splash screen. I want that when I load up my project here, for a moment it shows up a nice little graphic a little splash screen that lets me know that what I'm about to do, what I'm about to see. Um, we can use uh, any any graphics here. Again, of course, we need to. Uh, however, we need to know what dimensions to make these things, and then of course program it. So let's see if we can do this within the time we've got here. I want to make a splash screen load up. So in order for us to know what size of splash screen to make, I'm going to go back to the web browser, and this one. We can find it somewhere in the in the, in the portal, but here's one place um, that I found it pretty quickly. We let's go to the web and let's go to PhoneGap.com. PhoneGap.com, and this time we'll go to Developer Wiki. We've been going to Docs before, which is the official manual, the documentation of PhoneGap. This is the wiki, though, and the difference between this and the Docs is that uh, it, it's a wiki, and you've probably heard of Wikipedia. It's at least a decade old by now. Uh, Wikipedia is a document, that an encyclopedia that everyone can edit and hopefully improve for the better. So many um, developer tools and frameworks and such nowadays have some sort of wiki capability to them so people can collaborate and make something better. So this is where the, this is where people can go in and make changes uh, under the docs. Basically the, the PhoneGap team is the one that has the, 
the, the, the ability to change that. But under wiki, people can add to it. So if you discover something new, you could add to it and then um, improve upon it. So we go to the wiki, it takes them to their GitHub page. And we're going to see under chapter 2, 2.1, app splash screen sizes. So let's scroll down there, app uh, splash screen sizes, uh, dimensions. So we've got different sizes for the different devices. And so I want to notice it says what to do for Android, what to do for Blackberry, etc. Uh, so under Android, I'm going to say here uh, the largest size that it's mentioning is 1280 by 720 um, portrait or landscape. Eventually, we're, this is going to be a portrait only app. So 720 by 1280. XHDPI and then HDPI is 480 by 800. MDPI 320 by 480. LDPI 200 by 320. You should write those down. And then in Pixlr, we're going to create a graphic, the largest size there. So there's two big steps in here, like a, like a moment ago, but it took us a little while. First big step, design the thing. Second step, add it to the project and perhaps code it. This one we will need to code it because this uh, is going to be uh, related to phone gap. So we're going to write a, just one line of code. And then uh, our, our splash screen will show up uh, for as much as we specify, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. And then we'll add a little bit to it so that uh, perhaps, uh, depending on the, the... The reason for the splash screen is to have that little bit of branding that it pops up. It, it says, you know, um, I, I see this sometimes. They take a moment, some developers take a moment to have, you know, their, their logo of their company for a moment to give you the branding that this is the developer. And then it goes on to the actual app. So depending on your on your device, it may load up, it may load your app quickly, you know, under one second. So I don't want to really see that splash screen for five seconds. Or maybe you have a device that takes a while for it to load your uh, your APIs and such. So maybe I do need my my splash screen to hang around three seconds. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll put it for probably five seconds and then we'll write some code that says when the device is ready, move that splash screen out of the way. So we have dimensions here. I'm going to go back to Pixlr. And create a project. If you still had your Pixlr file open, you can just go uh, up to the File menu, New Image. File new. And the file name that we're going to use is uh, we'll call it splash. Um, nine patch graphics are useful, but we have to do them differently than this. Um, so I just want to show it this way instead because, of course, there's lots of ways to do it. Um, so what was our dimension again for the largest one? Width is 720, height 1280. The transparency here, don't put it transparent, because what will happen is, most likely, it'll show you your, your app's home screen behind the splash screen. So you'll see like whatever graphics of your splash screen and behind it will be the students. 
That'll be weird. So no transparency on this. So we get this tall, thin splash screen. Again, we're not we're not artists here. We can always change it later. But let's say that we're going to use the splash screen um, to give ourselves a little plug as a, as the developer of the app. Uh, so this is just going to be text-based, maybe with a little bit of color. Uh, so I'm going to write my SDCE by Victor Incorporated or something. So again, you can be as complicated as you want, but uh, this is not, I'm not going to stress it very much. I'm just showing you what you can do, and it's up to you to decide what you want to do. In the interest of brevity, I'm only going to save the XHDPI version, and then we'll add our code. We should be okay for the moment, but then we do want to have the other sizes, uh, perhaps a little later. But I just want to design something. You know, this is kind of plain, but something that will appear at the beginning of my app launch. And actually, we we can um, we can load this. Anytime we want, uh, the most what would make the most sense is to is to do it when the when the app actually launches. So um, I'm going to save this as a PNG for the best quality. I'm saving it as Splash, and then I'm going to save it to the desktop, and then I'll drag it into. Eclipse into our drawable folder. We'll do that together. And then we need to write a little bit of code. So I'm going to save that to the desktop. 
call it splash png Once you save it to the desktop, then you want to drag it in from your desktop into Eclipse into the drawable folder. Splash into drawable. It's going to ask you, of course, copy or link. I'm going to copy. And so to confirm, I've dragged a copy of Splash Ping into drawable. In a moment, we'll go back to the phone gap documentation so we can see, okay, how does it work? So part one is design the thing, part two is code it. And we'll go back to phone gap uh, to see how to actually code it. So make sure you've got splash ping in there. And back on the web browser, I'll go to phonegap.com. Back to the docs. And then back to the 2.90. Uh, documentation. We'll go to developer docs and then make sure up at the top right you switch to 290. And then we've got splash screen. So then this right here, Bill, is where it shows globalization. You might take a look at that. Not exactly what you're looking for. Uh, not general screen, but people are No, okay. A little limited then. Settings and stuff like that. Okay, so we'll look at splash screen. Show and hide the application's splash screen. And it's going to be a method, splash screen dot show, to show it, and splash screen dot hide to hide it. And it's got the setup for Android. Copy the splash screen image into the Android's res drawable directory. That's what we just did. The size for each should be, notice these say, at least. The other documentation seems to be newer, so it's got the higher quality sized ones. Um, that's part. So that's that's one. Put the graphic into the right folder. Uh, part two or step two. In the onCreate method of the class that extends DroidGap, add the following two lines. So I had to research this a little bit because again, this is popping up with that old term, DroidGap. This was the early name of what PhoneGap was, which is now Cordova. So it's going to have a couple of lines. Super dot set integer property splash screen R drawable splash. Well, it's saying we want to, uh, the first line sets the image to display as a splash screen. And it says, well, what particular object? Something called splash dot png. It's not going to say the png in the code. It's going to assume it. So if we called mine my splash screen, then that would be R dot drawable dot my splash screen. This is the sort of the event that it's going to be a splash screen that we are displaying at this point. And then the load URL, and here's a time. How long to display the splash screen in, sec in milliseconds? So how many real seconds is that? Close. 10. 10 seconds. 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. So that's what this is saying right here. If you name your image anything other than splash.ping, you need to change that line. The second line is the normal super.load URL line, but it has a second parameter that specifies a timeout value of the splash screen.
to dismiss the splash screen once the app receives the device event called the navigator.splashscreen.hide. Okay, so this is what I was saying earlier. To make sure that the app properly loads, even like on older devices, I'm going to have the splash screen set to 10 seconds. For most people, I'm not going to wait 10 seconds to look at the developer's you know, calling card. As soon as it's ready to be, as soon as the device is ready, then on, on device ready, we'll say hide it. So the device itself can, de can determine how long to display the splash screen. But right here, I just want to display it long enough just in case. So in order to do this, as it says, add this on create to Droid Gap. And in my research, here's where it is. We go back to Eclipse. And then inside of the reference library, now it's um, looking for the Cordova.jar. Oh, here it is. Android private libraries. What's that? Libs. There's two of them. Let me see, how did I do this last time? Text editor. Nope. Hmm. I'm looking for oh specifically I'm looking for hello uh, hmm, hello Cordova activity dot Java. Let's see. Okay, I think, I believe it's this one. Let's try it here, and then we'll confirm it. Okay, so in the source folder, and then inside of the, uh, the name of your app right there, you'll see example.java. That's still that internal name that is there, but the user doesn't see that. You want to double click that to edit it. This is one of these files in here that we don't need to usually edit, but it's got this, this deep stuff. Uh, here's the part where it's saying, well, which, which particular file are we loading when we first load our project? But um, we're going to add it right here. So this is um, line, mine says line 33. Uh, I'm going to make a new line 34 right after super.load URL. I'm going to confirm here with this code. Um, look at it like this. All right, so this is saying, number one, we need to do that, and then, okay, before it. So actually, we'll do it before. I'll delete that line, and I'll add a new line before uh, super.load URL. The load URL is loading up our index file. But before that, we're going to write what we've got in PhoneGap, which is super 
dot set integer property capital I capital P and then in quotes in double quotes I'm gonna say splash screen one word no caps and then comma capital R dot drawable dot splash that's the name of the file or it should be the name of the file in the folder. No, not according to the documentation. It shows right here simply the file itself. I meant in the original folder. Oh yes, semicolon. Okay. So that's oops, that's that line that we're we're basically saying we're gonna implement a splash screen. What's the file? Splash. And then we need to say how long to display the splash screen, which is then we're going to edit the parameter of the next one, line 33. After this config get start screen, we'll do a comma, and then that's when we say how how long in milliseconds, right? This is saying after after that get start URL, comma, and then we'll try for 10,000. So after config dot get start, yes, it will. I do want um, I do want it to be for a long time for a moment just to make sure it works, and then we will make it shorter after the device is ready. So yes, we'll put ten seconds. And, uh, let's see if this works. Now, what I've noticed when I've tested this before, it might not show right away uh, unless I unless you force quit the second time. I'll, I'll explain that in a moment, but um, I'm going to save all of that and then I'm going to run it on my virtual device. Let's see what happens. <coughs> run it on the virtual device. Pop over here. There it is. So let's count down to 10 and then eventually that should go over to the home screen. That was a long 10 seconds. Uh, I'm going to run it on my real device as well. Let me zoom in again. So um, those, those lines. The, the line 32 we wrote together. So here it is right here. There it is. It's looking pretty crisp. Way better than the emulator. Um, so it's going to go there for 10 whole seconds. We'll shorten it in a moment. But um, so line 32 we wrote, make sure it's all spelled properly. And line 33, we added that extra comma and the length of time. Uh, who did that work for? Raise your hand. Okay, so are people cool. We'll be doing lab time very soon, but uh, if it worked for you, that, that looks nice. Now, if I want to see it again, if I go to my virtual device and I go home, and then I go to launch the app again, it doesn't do it. This is what I'm saying about force quitting. I'm going to go back to my home here and click the home button for a moment, 
which loads up my recent apps, and then I can swipe to the right to close these apps. So these would open the apps fresh in the emulator. You can go back here and load it again, and then see it fresh. Depending on your device, you have to. Your device will have some way to force quit. I don't know them all, but uh, oftentimes it's to hold the home screen for a moment. So my my recent apps show up. I can then swipe to close that and then open it again to test it. And so I get the 10 second splash screen. So it's showing it for 10 seconds, which is too long. So then the documentation says uh, you should then dismiss it as necessary from the device ready function. So that'll be back on my assets folder, and we'll open the codica.external.js. So let's go back to edit. If you got it working, uh, we'll go back to kodika.extra.js. And um, so whenever on device ready is fired, that means that we have the ability to use all of our of all of, all of our features in PhoneGap, right? And then we assume that once we have on device ready has fired, well, the device has loaded up our project, so maybe remove that splash screen. I mean, we've looked at it enough. So I'm going to add it. There's a line here that says console.log device is ready. I'm going to add a line um, above it. And this is what the documentation says navigator.splashscreen.hide, open close parentheses, semicolon. So then at that moment, as soon as we have on device ready, cut out the splash screen. And again, this is in the Kodika ext js file. Question? Um. In our Kodika file, before the function of on device ready is, is where we have code that starts as soon as the app starts. Just couldn't we have put the display the splash screen splash screen there? Before it's like like right where you have document add event listener. Uh -huh. Isn't that something that, isn't that code that runs before anything really happens? Could, could we put Navigator's splash screen show there and it would show the splash screen? Possibly, but according to the documentation, it says do it this way and then to hide it, do what we're doing here. Now, if we wanted to show it at any point, we could make a new function and change that to show, mm -hmm. and then it would show it. Sure. Possibly what you're saying to do could work, but I'm going to go with you know the official documentation on that. I think it, it probably takes a while for this to load and start running. I see. Whereas the other one probably is earlier on in the in the ch in the chain right. of events. You, you want that splash to come as soon as possible. Yeah, because there's so many times as I've been doing web design throughout the years, you know, or like let's say design in, in Flash. There's always like you're waiting for the splash screen before you get the before you get the loader and such. It was always that problem that I would come across. And here it seems, well, if we put it in where it's telling us here in the example Java, this probably runs first because we have the whole Java framework, and then on top of that we've got phone gap, and then we get to this file before the app loads up. Yes? When I was encountering my problem with unstyled uh, content, mm -hmm. uh, particularly uh, the, the menus and so forth, one of the uh, things that I ran into a few times was the suggestion that people use splash screens to sort of hide it until it has a chance to compose all of its parts and style it and so forth. Oh, that's, that's another reason to use it, so that's why um, we looked at it here. Um, good point. 
did anyone try this out here now that I've done this? I've tested it on mine, and I didn't have to wait 10 seconds. It was probably like two seconds or so. So I have it, worst case scenario, you're going to see it for 10 seconds because your device might be very slow. And then it'll automatically hide when the device ready happens. So then that might then help you out also if perhaps your device doesn't show your icons quickly. You've got the splash screen to look at while that happens. Now it's not an animated splash screen, but I don't, those are kind of passe. Um, so make sure that works. I'm going to try this on my virtual device now. One, two, oh, really fast. One second. Hmm. All right, so I think uh, we're just about at the end of the lecture here. We'll do some lab time. We covered a lot, didn't we? We were mostly focusing on graphic aspect of things. That's something we don't want to forget. We could obviously keep working on it, but you know, now we've got a unique icon. We've got a, we've got the project rename, so it's no longer example. We've got this little splash screen going on. We're gonna start to look at the Android manifest file more. Mine currently says I've got 15 errors to deal with or warnings. Um, we're gonna deal with those, and uh, as we go on, we're gonna get the project closer and closer to fruition. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about adding unique fonts and such. Um, and again, start working on your project. I will put my project into the folder in case you lose yours, but I, I would prefer that you use your own project from now on today. Question? Is there a way with the splash screen that you can um, give it a minimum so that even if your device is ready in one second, it's, it, it actually will display the splash screen for three seconds just so, so the person has the time to read it if you have a message in there? From the documentation here, it doesn't look like it. It just has the maximum time and then remove. You could do other tricks, like instead of, um, you know, you can add some timers. But then if you have a device takes five seconds to become ready, then there would be two seconds without any time. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of uh, either. You can put a on-device ready. There is there is a JavaScript set timeout. On JavaScript, we can write something called set timeout, and on there, uh, or set timer, whatever it's called, we can tell it, um, yeah, for this amount of time, do this. Uh, that is, when that amount of time runs out, then do something. So we could have it displaying that way. Sure. Okay. That's one way around it. And you could buy like one second more of a, of this of splash screen display above whatever it takes to. Draw everything. Sure. Yeah. So um, that'll be it for the moment. Uh, it's it was a new class, remember? So make sure everyone that you used the add code and added the class, and that you signed in. You may sign out if you want, or I'll sign you out. But uh, thanks for coming today, and when we come back next time, we'll we'll keep going. <laughs>